What was it about the independent side of it that had you not go that way in the end? Well, when I worked out the costing of a website set up, how much it's going to cost me to manage the website each month, my marketing, advertising. Well, by the time you add all that up for your monthly, but the gym's fees wasn't that much more anyway each month. So that's why I thought, why not just use the gym's brand and have the same kind of monthly costs anyway? Absolutely, Matt. It's a good point. Because I think people underestimate how a lot of times we see in comments, you know, oh, you start independent and drop some flies in the street and all of a sudden you're going to be busy, which is a comment we see. <laughs> So thanks for joining us, Craig, today. And you're from Jim's Turn 1 and Pest Control Cashmere. And Stephen Dybel's nominated you for the Accor voucher, which you're already a member, which we just found out. But you'll get another one when that one expires, so you know the benefits to it. So on behalf of us, thank you for that. In regards to being a star franchisee, you've got you know, 258 ratings at an average of 4.8 stars. So we'll round it up to five stars. So you do a great job in the field and get a lot of good reviews. So let's first of all start off with talking a little bit about yourself and what were you doing prior to Jim's Pest Control. So I was doing pest control as well for six years before gyms, working for rent kill But before that, I was eight years as a operations manager, managing shopping centers. But my friend was actually doing pest control and I went out and spent a day with him and saw what he did and I enjoyed it. So then I started my training with rent kill and then I just wanted to go out on my own. I did look at starting my own pest control business, but then I looked at gyms as well. And then I decided, you know, the gyms brand, the work that I'll get from the gyms brand, it just wouldn't compare to me going out by myself. So yeah. um, six years later, I'm I'm glad I did it. That's great. Now, what do you enjoy about the, the job itself? What, what did you like about it? Well, you're always driving to different houses. You're meeting different people. And it's not just residential. You do commercial as well. Like you do hotels, restaurants, houses. So it's a lot of variety of work. And then obviously then you got termites as well, which is separate to pest control. So there's a lot of variety in, in the role. Yeah, I remember we did a day in the road with James Lyon down here. And um, we went to a few different places and it's, you seem to have to investigate a lot. So it's like, it's like a problem solve every time you go to. So it seems to be very stimulating in terms of what you have to do. Yeah. It's, it's not just spraying chemical. People just think you just rock up, spray chemical, and then you leave. Pest control is not like that. It's like, you know, there's all different type of ants. So then you've got to look at where the ants are coming from, what type of ant it is. So you know what chemical to use for that. And what well, might be rodents getting in somewhere. So then you got to try and find where they're getting in, block where they're getting in. And then there's possums as well. So we catch and release possums. Yeah. So it's not just rock up, spray chemical, and then leave. Yeah. I remember we went out for a day with him and he had a variety of jobs. He had a commercial and, and he had another one, for the bird and stuff. He was on a roof and looking down and it's like an investigation after all these questions and all this sort of stuff it was almost like a detective in a way and that's why i enjoy it as well because every day is different especially now i've got an employee now as well so it just frees me up a bit more to actually go out and see the customer and i can take on a bit more of that challenging role where i do have to figure stuff out and what one then just let my employee do the pest control sprays and stuff like that absolutely now let's talk about the services you provide so maybe it's, it's a lot more than just you know cockroaches and what people think in the division so do you want to just outline all the different services you've done over the years yeah, so the basic one is just your general pest spray, which is your pre-maintenance, which is your annual spray for your cockroaches, ants, spiders, silverfish. So that's just, that's the general one we do. But then you've got your rodents on top of that. And then you've got possums as well, wasps, bees, fleas, bed bugs. And then, so that's the pest control side of thing. Then obviously you've got termites. So your termite inspections, pre-purchase inspections, termite barriers, treating active termites if you find them in the house or in the yard. There's quite a lot of services that we do offer. Now, up in Queensland, I presume there'd be a lot of termite stuff you have to do? Yeah. You know, most of, I'd say probably 60% of my week is termite work and the rest of it is pest control stuff. Now, with the, with the, now with the termite work, Craig, like what's some things that maybe homeowners should know or what are some signs or when should they get you involved? What, what are some things to look out for? I mean, it's definitely recommended that Especially in Queensland, you should at least do an annual termite inspection, get someone out qualified, know what they're doing to do a full inspection inside, outside, around the yard, give you advice on how to protect your house as well. But for a homeowner, you know, try not to leave timber lying around the yard that's in contact with soil, no moisture building up against the house, like leaking taps, air conditioning runoffs, just basic things like that, that they can look out for for themselves. And what's the type of things you put in to protect? So you mentioned barriers there. What's that technology about? I mainly do chemical barriers, which is where we drill and inject. So if you've got a concrete path around a house, you drill like a small 12 mil hole and then you inject the chemical through the hole, which then bonds with the soil underneath the concrete. Um, that basically goes around your whole house, which forms a barrier. And that normally lasts around eight years. Okay. So it's like maybe you, once you install that, you come back once a year to check it as well, or what's the interval for that? Yeah. So it's eight year warranty provided that they do an annual termite inspection. 
And the only reason why we do that is because obviously if that chemical fails and we don't come back and do an annual termite inspection, we'd never know. And that's why that's why we do it. So if it does fail, then it's a free service to treat the termites. But then we get the chemical company involved as well, saying, "Hey, look, it looks like your chemical might fail. They can come out and investigate." So that's why we do the follow-up annual termite inspections. And I saw another post from another franchisee about um, I think they caught a few possums and stuff. So maybe you want to talk about it. it's not just people might just think it's extermination and stuff. It's completely the opposite with you guys. Yeah, well, that's right. I mean, even rodents. I mean, you can bait rodents, but then also you can trap and release rodents as well. So, but I don't do too much possum work anymore. But yeah, I have caught a few possums in the roof and then just take them to the local park and release them out there. Yeah, we've seen a few photos online with um, franchisees catching some possums or other native wildlife, and that's what they do and just re- rehome it or take it yeah. away, which is always great to see. Now, with, with your business as well, so how's it been over the six years in terms of your journey? How have you found everything? And, and you said you're glad you started it. You've done it at the start, which is great. But how, yeah. how was it, how's it been over time? It was good. Like from day one, I just remember because I was stressing things, gee, I'm not going to get any work. And from day one, my leads just started coming in and I, I was busy for the first month. You know, my mum filled up and I'm like, okay, this is, this, this is going to be good. And then five years later, I've had enough work to put someone on, but I've just been putting it off. And then eventually in my sixth year now, I, I just had to do it because I couldn't keep up with it, with the work. There was too much work. So now I'm glad I put someone on. Like it just, it just helps me out a lot to concentrate on my regular customers as well as picking up new ones. And it was just finding that right person to come on with me. Where did you look for that right, for that person? How did you go through that process? You know how I, I do chemical barriers? I went for a labor hire company to hire someone just to come out and do the drilling and the trenching while I just did the chemical. And I met him through that. He was a good worker, reliable, showed up and work. I used him on quite a lot of jobs. And he just came to me asking he's interested in pest control. Would I take him on? And I said, okay, I'll, I'll look into it. And I found out that the government was offering a, for the first year, they were paying 50% of their wage. Oh, wow. So, and that pushed me to do it. And it's like, yep, yeah, okay, I'll, I'll take you on. And now, yeah, it's, it's worked out really well. And it, 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 you make a good point because sometimes franchisees want to take on employees, but they sort of, they, they put it off because they don't want the headaches or they don't know how to do it and stuff. So maybe just sort of reiterate, it has been a really good positive to your business other people. Yeah. Yeah. I wish I did it sooner. Yeah. It's, yes, it's da- daunting at the, at the time because you think, geez, I need, now I need enough work to keep him busy as well as me busy. But if you're at that stage where you've got a lot of repeat customers, then you should be fine because all those repeat customers will keep you busy and then you can pick up more gyms leads. There was, there's enough work there for the two of us. So, And what's in regards to the, the, obviously you came from the background in regards to, but is it ongoing training that you do in division or how, is there any sort of upskilling or anything like that you guys do? Or cause you had so much knowledge before, it's sort of something you don't really need to do. Yeah. I don't really need to, cause I did have that six year experience before I bought the business, but like my employee, I sent him on different courses, like for bird proofing, say, so. Is learning how to bird proof solar panels or working on a warehouse, putting mesh up, netting up. So there's all different courses. Also, there's like different chemicals that come out that we learn up on new chemicals, the mixing rate, what's used for, what's best used for. So there is still some studying you can do. And back in the day when you were looking at it, you, yeah, you were saying you sort of tossing between independent and using the franchise. What was it about the independent side of it that had you not go that way at the end? Well, when I worked out the costing of, you know, a website set up, how much it's going to cost me to manage the website each month, my marketing, advertising, well, by the time you add all that up for your monthly, but the gym's fees wasn't that much more anyway each month. So that's why I thought, why not just use the gym's brand and have the same kind of monthly costs anyway? Absolutely. So, no, it's a good point because hmm. I think people underestimate how a lot of times we see in comments, you know, oh, you know, start independent and drop some flies in the street and all of a sudden you're going to be, you're going to be busy, which is a comment we see. <laughs> so, nah. we, so we feel great customer service. Maybe do an outline for people. What's your customer service approach? So you get the lead from the call center. What's yep. your full process? I pretty much call them back within 10, five, 10 minutes. And they're surprised when, when they answer the call, they say, oh, I was expecting two hours. They said, you know, only we're up to two hours ago. Well, you know, as soon as I get the lead, I always try and jump onto it. And that seems to work every time. Reason being is because it doesn't give them a chance to call someone else or, you know, it's already fresh in their mind that, yeah, okay, this is what I want to get done. Give them, give them the price. 
And then I talk to them a bit as well, what's involved in the service. I don't just give them the price and so on. I talk to them first, talk through the process, what's involved, what's the chemical we're using, where we spray it. It's safe for kids, pets, and go through the whole talk with them on the phone so they're comfortable with what we're doing. And then, yeah, they're happy with the price and we book it in from there. Yeah, I think it's just how you talk to them and explain it to them on the phone and, and they're quite happy. Yeah, so you're almost heart, client education because they wouldn't know really about it so you're educating but you mentioned something interesting in about uh safe if it's safe around kids and, and animals and stuff like that is that something that people because people might assume i think they get the whole vision of the simpsons right and you have the big yeah you have the big circus tent over there you have yeah. the five bombs under there and then you know three days later you come back so maybe you want to talk about that sort of that side of it the gusset process we, we we do still do that so if okay. you've got if you've got um indian drywood termites in your house the only way you can get rid of them is you do have to tarp up the house and fumigate we don't yeah, you, do it because you need a fumigation license. Yep. Um, but you still do that type of thing. But generally, um, no, the spray, these days, the spray goes around the outside of the wall and then it goes around underneath the eaves outside. And then inside, it's just basically spray chemical around the skirting. And then we dust behind the dishwasher. We dust up in the roof. And then we just tell people, you know, just stay out till it's dry. Once it's dry, it's safe to go back in. So, okay. So, it's, so most of the products you use now are pretty, pretty safe in that, in that regard? It is, yeah. I mean, you still get people advertising eco-friendly chemical and stuff, but there's no such thing, you know. It's still killing the cockroaches and the ants, the same stuff we're using. So there's no, you know, environmentally friendly chemical out there, even, even though that's what people want. But at the end of the day, we're killing, you know, cockroaches and ants and stuff. So you still need... But Yeah, it doesn't go hand in hand, does it? Eco-friendly, but no. I'm going to kill this insect over here or whatever. But, but yeah. the chemicals are getting better as in like the mixing rate is a lot lower now. So, you know, we're not using as much chemical to water ratio. Yeah. So it's not, you know, that's why, you know, dogs and pets can go near it once it's dry because it's only leaving little particles behind that's going to kill your cockroach and stuff. Now with, um, with your treatments, what, what are you, what are the generally, I know everything's a bit different, but what's the sort of more of the, um, the typical stuff you're doing uh, for people, let's say in the winter, in the winter time? Winter is more rodent because, you know, it's cold weather. Rodents don't like it. They're coming in the house for some warmth and they start, you know, like chew, chewing on their electrical cables or um, you can hear them in the roof during the night time. So it's, it's mainly rodents during winter, but then I also tee up, when I do my termite barriers, my annual termite inspections, I tee up my annual t- termite inspections through through winter as well. Mainly because pest control does drop off a little bit because cockroach is not that like the warmth weather. So yeah. people aren't really noticing them as much. And so during winter, when you, you do it so then you can make that observation about rodents or you that they might have that, they might come to you with that information. Yeah. Because also, I mean, you got to go there as well because you don't know if it's possum that they're hearing or if it's rodent that they're hearing. So we need to get up, have a look, see, find the droppings, identify the droppings. And then from that, you can work out, okay, yes, it's possum or no, it's it's, it's rodents. And how's the support been from um from the Stephen um, in regards to, to your region and from the other guys in your region? How have you found that? Yeah, good. I've never had an issue. Um, I do the training up here for Steve as well, so I help Steve out. Uh, he mentioned that, yes. I've got to ask you about the training. So that'd be, uh, yeah. But no, um, you know, he always gets back with me in a good time frame. And then the rest of the guys, we work well together. I train a couple of guys here, so we all work off each other. Yeah, some guys are getting better at possums, so I might call on them to do possums. Or I don't do double-story bird proofing, so I know Paul does. So if ever my customer needs that, I always refer him to to Paul so I don't mind even my customers using Paul from gyms as well so and from your training experience who makes a good franchisee what sort of um qualities do you think that stand out to you when you train these people um I mean you got to be willing to learn as well and good customer service you need to always say pest control is more about the customer service than it is spraying Um, because because we're pretty much the only trade that goes in every room of their house so you, you got to build up that trust with the customer and they've got to trust you. And so good customer service is, is number one. And then, yeah, willing to learn. And that's a very good, that's a very good point about, yeah, I didn't think of that, about that with pest control being one, one of the only services that goes into everyone's house, but that completely makes sense because you have to do that to um, eradicate it. Yeah. And also, you know, most of the time they leave, I get customers now that just chuck out the keys and say, lock up when you're done. Really? Yeah. So that's what I mean. That's the trust that, you know, you need to build up with your customers that if they trust you to hand their house keys over to you and just leave, yeah, that, that's good. 
And have you had, have you been happy with the level of work over the years as well, Craig? Yeah, 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 yeah. sure. Now you yeah. find, you finding that, um, from your knowledge anyway, what's the best difference between, let's say a gym's termite and pest control service and let's say another independent or other operator, what's the sort of difference that you think from your perspective? Well, I, <laughs> I can say firsthand, you know, I work with rent to kill that I don't know if you know rent to kill Heard the name. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So they're like a worldwide company. The guys there don't care because they're on salary. So like they don't care. They just show up and do a rough job and leave because they, at the end of the day, it's not their business. They don't care. Well, you know, someone like us, it's our business. It's the gym's name that, you know, that we got to take care of and make sure that, um, you know, we do the right thing by the customer and we're not cutting corners. Yeah. It's a very good point, Craig. I'm glad you said that because that is the big difference that people need to remember with gyms if they've never used this before is, yeah, you're dealing with, most of the time they're dealing with the business owner like yourself. And if you don't do a good job, the gym survey system will, will pick it up and then the yeah. area matter, like the old franchise or Jim himself gets involved. So it's a very strict, strict system. Yeah. I mean, even Lane, my employee, you know, I trained him from scratch myself. So he does it exactly how I do it. He talks to the customers how I do it. So it doesn't matter if I show up now or Lane shows up, they're, they're happy. So, and that was, and that was the other thing that was putting me off getting someone as well. Cause when I'd mentioned to the customer, they'd always say, well, we want you to come back. Yeah. We, we want you to come back. And I'm like, so that was always in the back of my head. But now like I've been doing this customer for five years never had a tip lane went my lane went there he did the job and they gave him a ten dollar tip <laughs> oh no like, what's that say like, like, <laughs> i trained him like you do it differently <laughs> uh, that they made me happy though like you know, to you. if he's doing that type of service where he's getting a tip then that's yeah that's that's good which is unheard of in australia australians don't like the tip you know we pay right. their, their price that's pretty remarkable what he must have done there for that tip yeah. who knows he, well, he went above and behind. Like he, he was only meant to be um, spraying for ants and stuff, but he ended up doing a bit more for them. So th- they were happy. They were happy with that. Now, from um, with pest control, how long does it take for someone if they like the scent of doing termite and pest control? How long does it take to them, in your opinion, for someone to like maybe come from it and and, and pick it up? Well, it's it's a two week or well, four weeks in classroom, and then the rest of it's on the job training. So. Basically, like with Lane, he came out with me. I wouldn't let him go off on his on his own until I could see that he's ready to do it, which is probably about two to three months. So about three months, you could go out on your own. Yeah, because I don't think there's a lot involved with your with your service and your division. Like as I said, when I went out with James, like just the amount of knowledge he had for different things and having to investigate and try and extract the information from the customer that he needed as well. To then it's more like. Especially with the termite side of things, because yeah. if you're doing a termite inspection on someone's house and you miss termites in the house, in their house, you know, it falls down. It's a big responsibility when you're doing a termite inspection as well. So it's not just the pest control side of things, it's the termite as well, which takes a bit of time to, to get your head around. But you guys do a great job on that because I know, because we've obviously got Jim's insurance in here and you guys, I don't think have ever had one no, claim for, for missed termites or anything. So you do a fantastic job with that. So is there anything about gyms maybe that you want to let, let anyone know, like in regards to where you scared six years ago, but once you've been doing it so much easier or maybe looking back on it, some advice? Obviously, you're already doing pest control and, and coming into it. It was a lot easier for me. I just wouldn't think about it. I'll just do it. Like we, we just bought Jim's dog wash as well for my wife. Really? Well, yeah, so she's been going for a year and a half now and we're just about someone else on. We're just about to get a second trailer and put an employee on for her as well. So. You know, we, we wouldn't be buying this second, the gym's dog wash as well, if it didn't work. <laughs> so it definitely works. Like it's, it's a good system. It's good how it works, how he does it. Yeah. Definitely no regrets. That's for sure. I didn't ask you about your lifestyle. Do you have a family or anything or what do you do with your time? Yeah. So I've got a 10 year old daughter and then the 17 year old, uh, 19 year old son as well. And then I'm in the, I'm actually in the air force reserves as well. So really? Do, yeah. So I do the air force reserves now. That's great. How long have you been in there for? Just come out for nine months. Oh, wow. So what, what prompted you to do that? It's something I've always wanted to do. And obviously I've been busy with my business and now I've got Lane. It's freed me up a bit more to do that. But my son joined the gap year in the army and we went to Kapuka and watched him march out. And it just like lit a fire in my belly. Like, yes, I'm going to do it. And, um, went through all the process. 
got in, went to Wagga Wagga, did my military training, did my job training back here in Ambly. Wow. And then that's it. And then I, I now I do my role. What was the basic, what was the basic training like? Hard. I've heard, heard a few things about it because my cousins are in the river reserves down here in Warrnambool and they, they, they do it a part-time thing as well. And I'll say to me a few things. Yeah. It's, um, mentally and physically, like it pushes you to your, to your limits. That's for sure. Which is what I wanted because I've been doing pest control for 13 years. I wanted to challenge myself mentally and physically again. And, um, it definitely did that because especially with the reserves, like the full timers have to do three months where we only have to do four weeks, but they cram three months into four weeks as much as they can. So it's, it's from 5am to 10pm. It's full on all day. I can, I can imagine it would be, I've heard, I've heard a few things, but no, good on you for doing that. And it's great to hear that you do that as well as, um, be a gym's franchisee at the same time. And it's great to hear about your gym's family now, the gym's dog wash side of it as well. So how's it been watching your, your wife do that, that part of the business? Good. She's enjoying it. Yeah. She works her hours. She just does nine till three. And then, like, like I said, she, she's just busy now just doing repeat work. And we're getting literally, I think, four unserviced leads a day from gyms. Wow. But she just can't keep up with it. So I said to her, look, it's risky and it's, you know, daunting. But I think it's time now that you do put someone on and grow it to the next level. Because if you can get two more trailers on the road and you don't have to groom dogs and just sit back and just manage manage the trailers, then, you know, you're in a good spot. Yeah, there's a couple of franchisees in the division who were doing that. I spoke to a guy um, called Matt Wilson in WA. I think he's got five on the road and he's about yeah. to do He's about to do that stage where he's about to do that, where he's working on the business in the office and just has his trailers going out. It's definitely something that um, it can be done in the dog wash division, which is a great one. So, yeah, so that's where she's up to. So I'm, I'm actually looking at putting Lane's brother on now as well. So really? Yeah. yeah. Wow. It's great. So it's I might have two trucks on the road, so. Yeah. Well, has, well, has, well, has it? Has it let up, met your expectations of what you thought gyms was or has it, has it exceeded it? In what exceeded, you- exceeded. I, I never thought I'd have, you know, two trucks on the road. So it's, yeah, it's, it's good. Now you don't have to say dollar amount, but are you happy with the level of income you're making as well? Yes. hundred percent. Good. We can tell by your smile, you're doing all right. So <laughs> yeah. can't, I can't complain. We travel. I think we go overseas maybe at least once a year, maybe twice a year. That's great. Well, thank you very much for your time, Craig, today. We appreciate it. I know you've already got one, but we'll get it to you and that will kick in when your other one expires. So you don't have to do it, but um, we'll sort that out. But thanks for your time, Craig. And as you can see why you're a star franchisee and keep up the great work. And um, yeah, thanks for sharing your story today. We appreciate it. No worries. Thanks, thanks Craig. That. See you, mate. Bye. See ya. Bye. Bye. Thank you for listening to the episode of the Gyms Podcast. If you want to learn more about the Gyms Group, head to gyms.net or call us on 131 546 Australia or 0800 454 654 New Zealand. And if you did like the episode as well, please make sure you leave a review or a comment or a thumbs up or a comment on the video as well. We appreciate your support. And until next episode, we hope you have a great week.